Good day, everybody. Good day, everybody. Good day, everybody. Good day, everybody. <laughs> Good day, everybody, wherever you are in the world. So thankful, so grateful that we can have these moments, these times where we can empower each other to find our reason of being so that we can be effective in the things of God and in the things of life. And we can live in our purpose as he thought it out and thought it through before we were even put together. So I'm very much excited that you are here, you are coming, and uh, we do have a very, a very powerful uh, coachman that we have to do today. I'm really looking forward to this time, our time together as we get started on it. I would like us to, I'm going to address on the progress on purpose. I'm going to address on, um, you know, this, this very important subject. Uh, you know, knowing who you are, knowing who you are, knowing who you are. It is extremely important for you to know who you are. Knowing who you are is extremely important because in this world, there are so many factors that are competing with who you are. There are so many things competing with who you are. So many things that will get you to do what you are not or um, uh, because you you always wanting to, you know, the, here's what I've discovered. It, in life, you are either going to, 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 to be forced to function beneath who you are or you are going to function as who you are. Then you need to know. You need to know who you are. And it matters for you to know who you are. So I've got uh, seven principles I'm going to share with us that are going to help us uh, in knowing who you are. It, it is a very freeing and empowering experience when you know who you are. It's easy to say no to some things when you know who you are. And it's easy to say yes to some things when you know who you are. So I really want us to look into this thing and get to discover how, how to know who you are. And so come on in, my friends, invite others that progress on purpose is here. And I'm going to pray and then we get into it. Father, give us wisdom, guide us, lead us, show us and empower us and enable us to know who we are. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right. So we're going to get into it knowing who you are. The book of John, John chapter one, John chapter one. Uh, has got the story of John the Baptist from verse 19, and it reads this way. Now this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed. He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. They asked him, who are you? And he said, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. Then they say to him, who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? And verse 23 of John chapter 1 says, he answered and said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. All right. So here's John, John the Baptist, John the Baptist, John the Baptist. He is asked this question. He was a man. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He was not the light, but he came to testify of the light. That's what it says. All right. So that through him, uh, that all through him might believe. So John is saying, he was asked the question, who are you? And I want us to talk about, you know, as you progress in your life, you need to know who you are. Knowing who you are on purpose matters because it will clarify and uh, simplify some complex uh, complexities in your life. When you know who you are, some complicated issues will be simplified because you now know who you are. And uh, in order for you to know who you are, it's important. Two things that are very important in the knowledge of self. Uh, you need to know who you are not. Number one, know who you are not um, and then know who you are. Okay, it matters. You need to know who you are not and know who you are because it's, there are so many people in this world who are doing things that they are not, all right? It's frustrating. There's no joy. There's no freedom. There's no excitement when you do things that you're not. So know what you're not. We look at this scripture. John, they said, who are you in verse 19 of John chapter 1? And John says, I'm not the Christ. Let's start right there. You want to know who I am? 
So let me eliminate. Let me eliminate. I'm not the Christ. And then they said, well, are you Elijah? And he said, I am not Elijah. And then they said, are you the prophet? And he answered, he said, no, I'm not. Know who you are not. Know who you are not. It is very, very important. Know who you are not. There are some things that you are not. Okay? There are some things that you're not. And know who you are not. Because when you don't know what you're not, people can force you to do what you are not because you don't know what you're not. You just got to know. You just got to know what you're not. Know what you're not. It is empowering to know what you're not. Okay, so when you say no to something or you pass on something, it's not because you're weak, it's not because you don't have what it takes, but it is powerful for you to know what you're not. John says, I'm not the Christ. I'm not the Christ. Yeah, I I'm a miracle child, but I'm not the Christ. And they said, what about Elijah? You know, look at all the tempting people that John would have simply wanted to be associated with. You know, you could have simply said, oh, you know, because it brings notoriety, it brings light to you. And there are so many people in this world who are doing things that are not uh, them. And they are frustrated. There are so many frustrated people because they are doing things that they are not. Know what you're not, number one, and then know who you are. All right. For many of us, we don't know because we have always been told, oh, we are in environments where somebody else brings in uh, what they think we are, and then we become what they tell us we are. It's a dangerous thing to go through life not knowing who you are. You know, Jesus said to ask his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 15, he said, who do people say I am? Okay, who do people say I am? Definition of self is extremely important if you are going to eliminate distractions from your life. So let's get into it. Seven principles. I'm out of your way. I'm excited about this. Number one, you need to understand if you are to know as you grow in knowing who you are, you must learn now. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you principles that you apply and they will help you to arrive where you are going. Is that okay? So the application is in your hands. I'm going to give you the principles and you need the application is in your hands. It is powerful to discover who you are. Discover who you are. Yes, there are some things that you like doing. There are some things that you don't like, and it matters, and it really matters. It really matters that you know who you are not and who you are. So here's number one. Act where you want to be, not where you are. Act where you want to be, not where you are. If you're going to discover who you are, you must learn to behave, to act where you want to be, not where you are. All right. How does this empower you? Here's what it does. What it does is... You know, when you know who you are, people are always dealing with, with, the, with, with the, how do I put this? When you know who you are, you're always ahead of what people know about you. Because you're, you're, you're acting way. In other words, there's an imagination they, that is part of it. There's a faith factor that is in it. There's a hope factor that is in it. Even in who you are, when you act where you are, for many of us, we've been told, you know, there was nothing good that was going to happen. We're not going to be anything bigger than what we are because people always define you for where, by where you are. But when you act where you want to be, where you're going, it is, it gives you hope even in the midst of people who don't see it for what it is that's in you. All right? Here's number two, know where you add value. As you, as you discover who you are, know where you add value. You know, because what places and, and where you add value uh, bring and add more clarity to who you are. You don't add value everywhere. Okay, know where you add value. Don't, don't, don't just be, because when you don't know who you are, you will always be used to accomplish other people's thoughts and other people's dreams and other people's aspirations because you fit in their story. But do they fit in your story? So know where you add value. You don't add value everywhere. You don't. You, you absolutely don't. You don't. Don't have the, the complex of, you know, the world needs me. No, no way you add value. It matters for you to know that. Number three, uh, if you are to know who you are, learn to say next. Learn to say next. Learn to say next. Be addicted to the next move. In other words, don't react, respond. Okay, if you're going to know who you are, you need to learn to not to react, but to respond. M many of us, we live life of reaction. You know, people throw the ball at you, however they throw the ball at you, and before you know it, you react. And when you react, people get to have access into your heart, into your emotions, and by the time they are through with you, you have overspent um, the, the, the emotional capital 
that, 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 that you had budgeted for the interaction. So learn to say next. As you discover who you are, it matters because sometimes the clarity of now is in the next. So you got to have this, <laughs> the desire to, you learn it. You learn to say next because the matter of us, when, when, when p things come to us or uh, things are thrown at us, we want to address everything before we move. But when you discover it, sometimes clarity of today, the, the, today's clarity is in tomorrow, in the next move that you do. So as you, as you discover and as you learn to, to know who you are, uh, number one, act where you want to be, not where you are. Okay, behave where you want to be, not where you are. It really does matter. It really does matter. Because in other words, when, I, when people meet you, they can tell your preparation. When people meet you, they can tell your preparation. And your preparation determines where you're going. All right? So whilst you are being, so as you are preparing, you're preparing for where you're going. You're not preparing for where you are. So as you discover who you are, it's really, really important. Powerful principle. No, act where you want to be, not where you are. Okay, so many people, you know, we hinder our progress because we always magnify where we are instead of showing what else we are aspiring and living for. Number two, know where you add value. Know where you add value. You don't add value everywhere. You don't add value everywhere. If you're going to know who you are, you need to know where you add value. Know where you add value. Know it, know it, know it, know it. Let people doubt that, question that, but you need to know where you add value. All right. And number three, learn to say next. If you're going to empower the discovery of self, as you discover who you are, you must learn to understand that the next move may be the clarification that you need for the present stand. All right. So don't react, respond. You know, I, I've lived my life, um, you know, the principles I share with you, it's not that, you know, you, you need to understand. There are so many mistakes that we make in life. When you react, man, you, there are some things that you don't have to react. You just have to respond. That's why when you look through scripture, there are moments where people ask Jesus a question and Jesus asked them a question. And then Jesus said, if you answer my question, I'll answer your question. And when the people didn't answer his question, Jesus didn't answer the question. There are other moments where Jesus literally walked away from situations. Why? Because it didn't demand a reaction. It demanded a response. So you need to learn to say next, not next as a quitting mechanism, but next as an empowering self-discovery mechanism. If I engage this situation right now, I'm going to miss out on who I am. So what I'm going to do is respond by, by moving away from the situation. Sometimes moving away takes more strength than, than reacting and staying in the situation. All right. So you, you got to know who you are, know who you are, know yourself. Sometimes you need to walk away from the situation because you know you. If you stay there, you're going to be angry. You're going to say things you don't mean. And you're going to create a whole lot of apologies in your future that are necessary because you reacted. So instead of reacting, you need to learn to respond by learning to say next. All right. It's number five. Number five. I'm just empowering you on, on knowing who you are on purpose. John the Baptist in the book of John, verse 19 to verse 23, they asked John, who are you? And John says, number one, I know who I'm not. I'm not Christ. They said, are you Elijah? He said, I know who I am not. I'm not Elijah. They said, are you a prophet? John said, I know who I am not. I'm not a prophet. Then they said, now tell us, who are you? What do you say about yourself? And John says, whilst I know who I'm not, I'm not Christ. I'm not Elijah. I'm not a prophet. I know who I am. He says, I am the voice in the wilderness. You need to know who you are. When you don't know who you are, everybody can use you to accomplish their own goals. All right. When you know who you are, you, you, you are going to embrace the gift of, um, uh, uh, you know, where, where, where not every opportunity that I call it opportunity abandonment. There are some opportunities that you're going to say no to. Why? Because that's not who I am. It doesn't matter whether it's money involved. It doesn't matter whatever blessings comes with it. If it's not me, I am not going to package myself in a place that's not me. So know who you're not. And know who you are. And it will bless you with the gift of opportunity abandonment. Not every opportunity is yours.
It may give you more money, but it can take you away from your family. Okay? It may give you more notoriety, but it may also come with problems that you're not prepared to handle. So here it is, number, number, number five. Focus, as you discover yourself, focus on your resources and not your obstacles. Focus on your resources as you're discovering yourself. Focus on your resources uh, and not your obstacles. You're not going to discover who you are by things that, that block you. See, there are so many people in this world who try to define themselves by things they hate. Now, if you're going to know who you are, you need to define yourself by things you love. Okay? Do you know that most people, if you ask them, uh, what is it that you don't like? Some people have got 100 things. They'll give you a list of 100 things that they don't like. And then if you ask them, give me 100 things that you like, they don't even know what they like. Because in this world, many of us have been trained by the environments we, we grew up in and situations we find ourselves in. And we've been, we've been groomed to, um, uh, to, to move forward by resisting things. You see, if you're going to know who you are, you need to know who you are by things you are for. Know yourself for the things you are for, not the things that you are against. Many churches that we grew up in and we preached in and we pastored, many people come to church versus what they, knowing what they're against. What are you for? What are you for? What are you for? What, what cause are you willing? What brings joy to you when you do? You know, don't just know who you are by things you are against. This happens in marriages. There are so many bad marriages, not because the people are not great people. They are great people in a bad marriage because you're trying to make a relationship based on what you are against. What are you for? What makes you happy? Don't just always have a list of what makes you sad. All of us have got stuff that you've got to know who you are. If you're going to know who you are, you need, you've got to know what you are for not what you're against. Know what you are for more than what you're against. You know, there are some people as a pastor that I've discovered, come to church, join the church, and, and, and we always have a list of what they shouldn't do. You know, a Christian must not do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z. So for 20, we give them 26 reasons of things that they shouldn't do. And then they're asking you, so what should I do? Oh, just come to church. Oh, okay, I come to church, then what? So it's possible for you to be a believer who is worshiping God based on what you are against instead of what you are for. So if you're going to know who you are, what brings joy to you? What keeps you sleepless at night? Not because you are stressed out, but you are happy. What brings in the step, the pep in your step? And what brings, what, what, what makes you blush when you think about it? Are you with me on this one? It, it matters. Focus on your resources and not your obstacles. What are the positives in your life? You know, what, know who you are. Man, I love people. That's a, that's a resource in my life. That's a positive in my life. Man, I listen to people. That's a positive in your life. You need to take an inventory of your resources right now in order for you to know who you are on purpose. Take an inventory. What are you good at? I didn't say what do people say you are good at. What are you good at? So focus on your resources and not your obstacles. Some of the people who are in our lives who are closest to us, they envy the good in us. Be careful of anybody who always come to you with negatives. Before you give me one negative, give me two positives. Thank you so much, please. Uh, just, just, just share. Share on your platform. That's all you got to do. All your friends will get on and be blessed because you got to know who you are. You know, I have daughters. I have daughters and... Um, one thing that really matters is, is, is I'm trying to instill this in them. You know, when they're your kids, sometimes they listen, other times they don't listen. But here's one thing that is very important. You need to look and find what your resources are. You know, if you are a girl and you are single and you have brothers, your brothers are your resources. If you have a father who loves you, who is in your life, your father is a resource in understanding man. If you are single, if you have uncles that love you, they are your resources. Focus on your resource, not your obstacles, as you discover who you are. Ask your family. If you have a loving family that listens to each other, not everybody has a perfect family, but there's something in every family that you need in you as you discover who you are. Ask them. You know what? If you are single, you're a single young lady, hey, your family is right there. Hey, what kind of a person do you think I need to date?
Ask them because they know something about you. <laughs> they are your resources. They are your resources. Listen, focus on your resources and not your obstacles. Nobody has it all. You ever heard me say it? Nobody has it all. Everybody has, re has obstacles in their lives. But you, your future and your progress is going to come from your resources and not from your obstacles. So if you're going to know who you are, it matters. Don't tell me 99 reasons why you cannot do it. No, give me 99 reasons you believe you can get it. Know who you are. You know, for example, some of you don't, don't, some of you can, some of you do better working alone. Know who you are. You know what, Pastor? I do well when I work alone. <laughs> okay. Which means you're going to be a bad team, team player if you, if you go to a team. It doesn't mean you are evil. You just need to know who you are. Give me an assignment where I can work alone. I do better when I work alone than when I work in a group. Know who you are. Oh, he's a good man, Pastor. She's a good lady. Oh, she's, yeah. But know who you are. Is she good for you? <laughs> is he good for you? He's good, but is he good for you? <laughs> so you got to know who you are, child of God. Focus on your resources and not your obstacles. As you discover, the joy of being alive is discovering who you are. You never fully know and understand who you are because every day reveals a little bit of who you are. Every season of your life reveals who you are. When we were young, come on, talk to me. Can I talk to you a little bit? When we were young, we were afraid of the dark. I remember when I was a little boy, I was afraid of the dark. I remember as a little boy, I used to cover my head when I go to sleep because I was afraid of the dark. I don't know how it made sense that I would getting in dark blankets would save me from the dark. But now that I'm a grown man, I walk into my house with no lights on. Why? Because this season of my life, I've matured enough to understand there's no boogeyman in the dark. Oh God, it is. But it's possible for you to have been a little child who used to be afraid of the dark. Now you are a grown man, grown woman, and when you sleep, you sleep with your head covered. In other words, you are, you, oh God. You are still experiencing, oh God, here it is. Can I, can I talk to you right now? Focus on your resources and not your obstacles. Discover who you are. Young ladies, it, it's good to be young and wonderful, but you are going to discover another side of you when you get married. Oh, it's wonderful to be married and it's beautiful to have a husband and a wife, but here it is, you're going to discover another side of you when you become a mother. Oh, you're going to discover another side of you when your children go to school. Oh, you're going to, so, so you are going to keep on discovering yourself. You need to know you and fall in love with you. That's why the Bible says, the Bible gives us two commandments. Love the Lord God with all your, with everything. Okay, love him with everything you got. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. In other words, if you don't love you, you cannot love me. You will always love every person to the degree that you love yourself. So know yourself. Don't you think that matters? It's very, very important. Some of the people who discourage us coming negatively into our lives, if we knew who we were, we would let them go. We would let it be water on the back of a duck. In other words, let it fall and roll. Why? Because, listen, I, that's not me you're talking about. You ain't talking about me. I'm not that. It, I know me. I know who I am. So it matters. It really does matter, child of God. It, it really does matter, child of God, for you to know who you are. Okay? Because it matters. If you don't know who you are and you start dating, you're, somebody's going to shape you into their own image. If you don't know who you are, a church can literally change your identity. A church can change your identity when you don't know who you are. A church can make you hate certain things, hate certain people, because you don't know who you are. I remember, oh God, here it is. Look, I've got a funeral in a minute and I need, I need to finish this thing so that I can do uh, this funeral I have, okay? I, I, let, me, let, me, let me wrap this thing up. It matters for you to know who you are because when you don't know who you are, I remember in my family, I was the only Christian. I was the only Christian from third grade to 12th grade. So for nine years, I was the only Christian in my family. 
My father used to drink and my father used to smoke weed sometimes. Okay, okay. And my father used to drink. So I, he used to send me to go buy liquor for my daddy. And let me tell you something. It was very tough. I was in a church where rules matters. People don't drink, don't do whatever. But this was my father. So when my father sent me to go buy at the bottle store, beer store, to go buy for him, I had to hide that thing. I had to hide that thing. But when I came home, I discovered my father was a good man. We had fun at home. We laughed at home. We danced at home. We could play music and get down. <laughs> I miss those things. My mom and my daddy, all of us would get in there, get excited. I don't know whether maybe it was from the smoke of the, my father's weed that he had blown on all of us in the house. But we got happy. We were a happy family. I was the only Christian and my mother, father, sister, brother, brother, five of them were not even going to church with me, but they, we were the happiest family ever. And so when I would go to church and hear people talk about people who were not in church, they were not talking about my family. Surely they were not in the church, but they were more loving than some people at the church. You gotta know who you are. This has shaped my ministry. When I preach, when I talk, when you listen to me, if you've been following me for a little bit, you're gonna discover I have a self, a soft spot for the underdog because I was raised among those who couldn't believe. When my father came to church, he came to church because I was preaching. When I made the appeal, my father accepted Jesus Christ when me, his son, made an appeal. You gotta know who you are. You gotta know who you are. And let me tell you something. The day that my father came into the church, he, he heard his boy was going to preach. And he said, son, I'm going to drive you to church. And I said, daddy, he said, yeah. And let me tell you something. My father paid for two years of my theological training when, when he was drinking and smoking weed and not going to church. And the church itself had refused to pay for my fees. You gotta know who you are. Let me tell you something. If you are going to be so impactful in this world, there are some people you don't have to hate. But if you don't know who you are, there are institutions, people that can make you dislike some people because you don't know who you are. There are so many people who have walked away from their families because they became Christians. And you ask them, how come you don't talk to your mother? Oh, because she doesn't go to church. Really? The same God who is saying, honor your father and mother, you are saying now, he's saying because mom and daddy ain't going to church with you, then they're, they're less of your parents and all the people at the church are more, oh God, don't get me started, know who you are. So my father said to me, son, I heard that you're preaching, I want to come to church with you, I'm going to drive you to church. I said, okay, daddy, that's okay. And then, and then he said, well, uh, I'm going to ask you for permission. I said, what you got? He said, listen, I need to, I need to, I need to get a shot of whiskey. I said, Daddy, you drink all the time. And he said, no, 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 no. I need to take a, 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 a sip of whiskey. Listen to me. I'm going, I need, I need to take a glass of whiskey so that I am not shy. I said, what do you mean, Daddy? He said, because I am coming to church for the first time in my existence today. I cried. I said, Daddy, you're coming to church. He said, I heard you are preaching and today is my first day to ever come to church and I'm shy because I've never been in a church so I need a glass of liquor so that I can feel a little bit happy and so that I can I can be comfortable in the church and I made an appeal and my big old wonderful black father walked all the way from the back of the church I was crying and he walked and I heard my daddy he was a good man know who you are then I joined the church I discovered there are so many hurtful people in the church there are so many hurtful people in the church with titles in the church. Having a title in the church doesn't mean nothing. Having a title don't mean you got Jesus on the inside. Don't get me started. I have pastored some churches where I had to take a, a painkillers for me to just survive. Know who you are. You got to know who you are because this life has so many people who want to shape you into who they think you should be. Know who you are. If you're going to be effective in the things of God, you need to know who you are. John the Baptist said, I know who I'm not. I'm not Christ. I'm not Elijah. I'm not a prophet. Then tell us. He said, I know who I am. I am the voice in the wilderness. It clarifies your purpose when you know who you are. You are not everywhere when you know who you are. 
All right, then number, number six. Let me finish up. We're going to do the funeral. Number six, find your passion. Find your passion. What fires you up? Find your passion. Find your passion. As you seek to know who you are, you need to find your passion. Find your passion. Find it. I didn't say anybody's passion. I'm saying your passion. Find it. Find your passion. You got to know who you are so that you know what you are willing to do even when you're not paid. That's your passion. It's not only money that defines who we are. Some of the stuff we do, come on, talk to me. Some of the stuff we do, we ain't paid. You know, I'm here every day on, 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 uh, on, 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 <laughs> on progress, on purpose. I'm ready. I'm preaching like a madman for free. You're getting this stuff for free? <laughs> it's my passion. I want you to get better. <laughs> when you get better, we get better. I believe it. When you get better in Zambia, Zambia gets better. If you get better in China, China gets better. If you get better in Australia, Australia gets better. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Why? Because we poured into each other and we were effective wherever we were. Find your passion. Nobody's going to pay you enough for your passion. Your job does not necessarily translate into your passion. No, it's not. Whose passion do you bear? Woo! Pastor, like I'm busy. Le le let me save my voice. All right, I got to preach at a funeral. Here's the last thing that is very important as you discover who you are. So here, yeah, there's seven. Number one, in order, as you discover who you are, act where you want to be, not where you are. Act where you want to be, not where you are. All right, if you are in Africa and the resources are limited, wherever you are, don't act where you are. Act where you want to be. In other words, be the best wherever you are. Whatever is best wherever you are, be that. Are you feeling what I'm saying? If you are in a village, there's something best in the village. Aspire to be that. Wherever you are, it doesn't matter where you are. Act where you want to be, not where you are. Because faith is the evidence of things you hoped for. Without hope, you can't even be anything. You can't even have faith without hope. Because faith is the evidence of things hoped for. So hope has to begin so that faith can be... Oh, God, I feel like preaching up in here. Somebody help me. All right. Act where you want to be, not where you are. Number two, know where you add value. Know where you add value. Know where you add value. Don't, 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 don't hang around people that you don't add value to. Don't hang around people who are always negative about your positives. Oh, come on, talk to me. Don't hang around. Somebody type that thing. Don't hang around people who are always negative about your positives. Know where you add value. There's somebody in this world who is looking for you. The way you are, you are a solution to somebody and to something. Know where you add value. When you walk into where you add value, listen to me, you're going to be celebrated and you'll not be tolerated. Walk away from where you are tolerated and run where you are celebrated. Know where you add value. Woo! I feel it. All right, Pastor Kambi, is it chill it? Number three, learn to say next. Learn to say next. Know who you are. Yes, Pastor, we have dated for six years, but if it ain't working, learn to say next. Move. Pastor, I've worked at this job for 20 years, but you are not happy at all. You dread going to work. Learn to say next. Know who you are. Don't react. Don't react, but respond. All right. And then number Number four, number four, here's number four. Act confidently on good ideas. Act confidently on good ideas. You're discovering who you are. There are so many good ideas in your life. When you go for good ideas, act confidently on good ideas. Whatever good ideas they are. Listen, the Bible says every good gift comes from God. If it's good, it's God. Are you listening to me? If it's good, it's God. If it's good, it's God. I just want you to understand there's no good thing that will ever happen in your life without God. Every good gift, that's what the book says, every good gift comes from above. The Father of lights. Every good gift, every good gift, every good gift. Don't discount the gift because of the avenue through which you get the gift. Oh, the Bible had some lepers. 
There are some lepers who saved the city in the Old Testament. They were lepers, but they went out there and they saved the city. They were lepers, but they saved the city. Don't discount the channel through which your blessings come through. My father sent me to theological school when he was drinking. You, you got to know who you are. Act confidently on good ideas. Don't hesitate on good ideas if you want to know who you are. Okay, you want to discover who you are through good things, not always through bad stuff. You don't want to be just doing corrections on your life. You know, you don't want to live a life of correcting mistakes. You can be offensive discovering who you are by acting confidently on good ideas. All right, then number what? N number five, <laughs> focus on your resources and not your obstacles. Oh, you got it going on. You, listen, if you are a pretty somebody, there's a reason why you are pretty. If Esther was here, she would let you know my beauty was my resource. <laughs> if Joseph was here, he would let you know my dreams were my resources. Come on, talk to me. You need to understand that. You just got to get it. The thief on the cross will let you know, well, being on the cross was my resource. You got to act on your resource and not your obstacles. Do you know there's somebody somewhere who's praying for a life? a life just like yours, and they will do better? Do you know there's somebody somewhere in the world who is asking God to give them a life just like yours? Nothing more, nothing less, and they would have arrived. Sometimes you're the only person discounting the resources you got. If you're good with children, that's a resource. Good with old people, that's a resource. Good with, with hurting people, that's a resource. Good with people's weddings, that's a resource. Focus on that. You're going to find who you are and not your obstacles. Know who you are by what you are for, not always what you are against. Don't know what you are against more than you know what you are for. Oh, preach, Pastor, come be easy, preach. I like that. <laughs> and number six, find your passion. Find your passion. Let me tell you something. You got to find something that fires you up in the morning. You got to find something, in, and every one of us has it. Every one of us has it. You got to find something that when we wake you up at three in the morning, all you got to do is say, give me a minute so that I can stretch myself and yawn a little bit. But hey, let's go. <laughs> if your passion is cooking, cook and, and feed cities. Do what you got to do. You got to find your passion. Find it. Don't copy other people's passions. No. All right, then the last thing I'm out. I'm out, everybody. I'm out, okay? I'm out. I'm out. Number seven, learn to ask. This is very, very important. This one here. Learn, if you are going to discover who you are, learn to ask how and why questions. Learn to ask how and why questions. Those two questions will clarify things as you seek to discover who you are. Learn. You got to learn it. You got to learn because people always ask what questions. You know, the what questions are not going to bring you out. It is the how questions and the why. The why and the how. The why and the how questions. Learn to ask those. If you're in any situation, find a way of asking how. How do I do this? How is this done? You know, uh, why are we doing this? Because when you get the reason of the why and you get the reason of the how and, and, and you get the explanation on the how, it's done. For many of us, that's why I started this progress on purpose. God put this on my heart in 2010. I had this progress on purpose in 2010 only to execute it in 2021. I, I'm just telling you, it's progress on purpose was put on my heart by God in 2010. Only to make it a reality in 2021. When you listen to my preaching and my teaching, go to my YouTube channel, Google up my name, wherever you find me, you're going to discover I am a practical, relevant, and biblical preacher. That's it. I, I don't preach stuff that you cannot use at your home. I don't preach stuff that you cannot use on your job. I don't preach stuff because when I read the Bible, I discover that my God is a practical, relevant, and biblical God. He doesn't give us stuff that we don't use and don't need. 
If God says something, it's going to help you in the now and prepare you for later. Thank you so, so much, Miss Darlene. I wish I knew one through five. You're right, girl. You're right. All of us. And let me tell you something. People are trying to make you in their image. Oh, God forbid that you are dating or you are married to someone negative. Because by the time they are done with you, you are going to be hating who you are. And let me tell you something. Anybody who tries to change who you are, you end up hating them secretly. And it's easy for people to mess up with who you are when you don't know who you are. See, when people make you do what you're not, something on the inside just lets you know, ah, there's something not right. And I tell you something, if you're single out there and you are not married and whatever stuff it is, listen to me. You need to find who you are before you bring anyone into your life. And deeper still, before you give birth to anybody. <laughs> Because whoever you're going to give birth to, they're going to be an extension of you. You don't want to extend your dysfunctional self because you haven't discovered your true self. So you need a counselor, you need a coach, you need a mentor, you need a partner, you need a collaborator. You need those four relationships. Listen to the presentation I did yesterday. You need those four relationships because they help out. Uh, bring clarity in your discovery of who you are. You need a coach, you need a counselor, you need a partner, you need collaborators. Those four relationships, they help simplify and shake the dust and the ground and the soil so that the real you rise to the top. May the best version of yourself. May you experience the best version of yourself before this life is over. Yes, I know you are saved. Yes, I know the blood of Jesus Christ saves. Woo! From the Gadamos all the way to the Abba. The Bible says he will save you completely, totally, and wholly. And after you've been saved, child of God, you've got to discover who you are in the light. Because if you don't know who you are, you can still be messed up while saved. Why? Because people have a tendency of putting labels on you. People have a tendency of defining you by your past. So if you don't know who you are, even when you are saved, your past labels can hinder your empowerment in the light. Isn't it funny that in the Bible we still call him the prodigal son? I see one of my mentees, David, he's here with us. David, oh, you know you can preach this boy. You, you, they, we call him the prodigal son and yet he came home. We call her the woman of the issue of blood, and yet Jesus healed the blood. We call her the woman at the well, and yet she went back into the city. We call her the woman caught in adultery, and yet she was delivered from it, and Jesus said, go sin no more. Let me tell you something. We call him Simon the leper, and yet he was healed from the leprosy. Let me talk to you, child of God. We call him thief on the cross, and yet he was saved and forgiven right on the cross. Humanity has an addiction with your past. If you don't know who you are, people will define you by your yesterday and deny you every opportunity in the present because it's human. So you got to know who you are. Like John the Baptist, when they ask you, are you, who are you? Tell them, I know who I'm not. And I know who I am. Well, are you the Christ? Tell them, wow, it's wonderful to, act, to be the Christ. I am not Jesus the Christ. When they say, what about Elijah, the prophet? Tell them, oh, it's wonderful. Thank you so much for the opportunity to associate my name with the great Elijah. But I'm not Elijah. And when they say, are you a prophet? Tell them, oh, I would have loved to be one of them Israel prophets. But no, I'm not a prophet. And when they say, then tell us something about yourself. Lick your lips. Clear your throat. <clears> and <throat> let them know I am the voice in the wilderness. You got to know who you are. Know who you are. Your purpose is tied up to you knowing who you are. Everything you do, I know of preachers who try to be politicians and they fail because they thought because they could preach in the pulpit, they could become great politicians and they failed because they didn't know who they were not. You are not everything. 
None of us has everything. Nobody has it all. So know what you don't have so that you can ask from those who do. And know what you got so that you can give to those who don't have. That's what's up with life. Blessings on each other, God. I got to go do a funeral. I love you all. We're going to come here and meet here again tomorrow. I, I'm just on fire. Listen, wherever there are people, I'm there. I, I want to empower people. Let me tell you, my greatest joy is to see the light of hope in the eye of a child of God. I, I love it. I, and listen, I, listen I, oh, oh, I love people. I do. I love people. I just want to see that light come on. When the light come on, oh, there's joy on the inside. Because I discovered that G, for God so loved the world, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So blessings on you as you uh, go on and do what you got to do. Uh, we extremely appreciate you. Progress on purpose. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you can. Um, and invite others to do the same and like some of the videos as you uh, so that it can actually draw many people to our channel because we want to empower as many. You can, you can do this with me. All you got to do is subscribe and invite your friends who need just a coach uh, for this season in their lives. I'm here, I'm available, and we'll meet again tomorrow as we do what we got to do. Yes, know yourself on purpose. We are praying, Father, thank you for the gift of not knowing it all. Thank you for the gift of discovering it all. And whilst we are in between not knowing it all and discovering it all, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, the teacher who guides us into all truth about you and all truth about ourselves. Please have your own way with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings on you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Progress on purpose.